So in this next video, we previously mentioned the idea of population dynamics and how we're studying change in populations. We're going to be looking at that in much more detail by taking something that we learned previously, the idea of population size, and studying the change within that population size. That's a big part of population ecology, so we'll entitle this next flowchart Changes in Population Size. Changes in pop for population size. So this is a big idea in population ecology. Now, just as a uh, foreword before we get any further, there are going to be several equations that we're going to be looking at throughout this lecture, specifically related to changes in population size. Do not get caught up in the derivation of these equations, meaning where do they come from, um, how mathematically they solve out. Don't worry about that. Always focus on the bigger picture, and I'm going to try my best to make sure that we focus on the bigger picture with these fancy calculus-driven equations. So don't get scared when you start seeing derivatives. It's all right. We're going to get through it. So let's look at some changes in population size dynamics. Overall, when we think of changes in population size, it's very, very simple. And we can simply state that changes in population size are directly affected by four different things things, four different processes, affected by four different processes. And these are very important processes um, that tell us all about population dynamics. We can state the following. We can state that the change in size, when we say change in size, we're of course referring to change in population size, is equal to the following four components interacting with each other. Those components are as follows. We have to understand that there are going to be births within the population. These are going to obviously increase the population. We have to also account for the fact that there may be immigrants within our population. And when we think of an immigrant, those are people that are being added into the population, and thus we add them to the people that are born into the population. These are things coming into the population. But we cannot stop there. So this is one, this is two. We have to also account for the fact that if people are being born, that means people, individuals in the population must be dying as well. So we have to account for the deaths. And how do we account for the deaths? We subtract them because we're trying to figure out the size of the population. Births and deaths. And there are also not only going to be people entering the population, but there's also going to be people leaving the population. And we call these people emigrants. Okay? different than immigrants, very similar sounding words, but they're two different, completely opposite from each other. So those who are entering the population are immigrants, those who are leaving the population are immigrants, those who are born are part of the births, and those who die are part of the deaths. We have one, two, three, four different processes affecting the change in population size. We add up the, in, the, enter, the things that are entering and we subtract the things that are leaving, the people that are leaving. So this is a very simple, easy way of understanding these changes in population size, but we can get a little more fancy and look at some more, uh, let's say, powerful equations that are going to help us really focus on the changes in population size with this basic understanding of the births, immigrants, deaths, and emigrants. So what do I mean by that? Well, what we can do now is, and I'm going to take this part right over here since I have some room down here, we can now look at not only changes in population size, but we have to look at time also. Because remember what we said about a population. A population is living in the same place at the same time. So now I'm actually going to focus on change in, and I don't want to repeat myself, change in pop size. So we're still looking at change in pop size. We're still looking at all of these four components, but now I'm going to add something. This pop size change is going to be over time. And when we think of time, we have to really focus in on a bit of a different equation. And that equation is the following. It's going to be delta n, which means change in population size. I'm going to put change in population size over, and this is going to be a fraction, the change in delta t, time. And that's exactly what I wrote here. Change in population size over time, literally in mathematical terms, looks like this. Delta n over delta lowercase t. This is change. n stands for population size. We'll get to that. And that's over time. And this is going to be equal to, very simply, b minus d. 
And now what we're going to be doing is, as we go through these equations, we're going to be boxing in equations just so that we keep track of all the equations that we're going to be looking at and don't get lost within the derivations of these equations. So that's an equation to remember, so we're going to box that. This is another equation to remember, so we're going to box this. And now don't worry, we're going to look at each of these terms and what they mean. Um, we can state that n is equal to our population size, something I mentioned, but now we have it written down, so that's good. We also have lowercase t, which is equal to time, mentioned before, but we have it written down. B, you might have guessed, is equal to births. And capital D, of course, is going to be deaths. So quite a simple e e uh, equation still, um, but we're going to come add some complexity to this even further by looking at a more important version of this, and that more important version in terms of a population ecologist world is going to be the following. We're going to take this, this equation, and we're going to do the following. We're going to make sure that we express it in a certain way. We're going to take this equation and express as per capita changes. Okay, so this is a new term. Per capita changes. And whenever you think per capita, just think of the following. Just think per individual. And I'm going to write that out completely per individual. Per capita and per individual literally translates almost exactly um, to one another. Okay, So they're interchangeable terms and what I mean by per individual is uh, going to be really understood when we actually understand uh, the idea of this change in expression to this first equation that we have here, second equation. So what do I mean by this? Well what I'm going to understand about per capita is the following. We have to change our understanding of births and deaths by stating that births are actually going to be equal to lowercase b, not capital B, and lowercase b will mean the per capita birth rate. Per capita birth rate. So this is a key idea here. It's a per capita, per individual birth rate, and that's the key here. We're looking at a rate now. We're not just looking at a number, but we're looking at a rate. You'll see what I mean by that. We can state Furthermore, that a per capita birth rate is going to be defined as the average number of offspring produced, average number offspring produced, so this is an average, and this is specifically per unit time, per unit time. Why are we looking at a per unit time now? Well that's because we're looking at a rate and a rate always involves a course of time. How long did it take for this to happen? And so we're gonna have a unit time and this is specifically going to be in reference to the average member of a population. Average member of population. So let's reread this. Average number of offspring produced per unit time by average member of a population. This basically means if I p take a population and I pick out an, an individual from that population, I can tell its per capita birth rate because I know the average number of offspring produced per unit time by any average old member of the population. We're not talking about the most fit or the least fit. We're just talking about the average. And now we can further sort of exemplify this by looking at an example uh, like the following. I think this will really drive home the point. The example will be the following. Let's imagine we have 75 births, but we have to give it a per unit time. Let's say 75 births slash year. That means 75 births per year. And I'm going to say that's in a population of 1,000 individuals. Of 1,000 individuals. So we have 1,000 individuals, 75 births per year. I can easily get a per capita birth rate, a per individual birth rate by doing the following. I have 1,000 individuals. I have 75 births. All I have to do is do 75 divided by 1,000. That's going to give me a per individual birth rate. And that per individual birth rate is going to be equal to 0.075. 0.075, and that's also equal to lowercase b, our per capita birth rate. That simply means there are going to be 0.075 births per individual, 0.05 births per capita. That's what we mean by this number, 0.075. 
Furthermore, we can take this information, you know, it might seem like it's useless. What is the purpose of figuring out this births per capita? Why do I need to know how much and uh, one random individual has the chance of, you know, having a birth in that year? Well, that's because we can take this and really apply it to this, this big letter B, further by stating that big letter B is not simply just births. You're ignoring an entire unit time. You're ignoring the individual. So what you're going to do is you're going to say B is actually equal to not just births, but it's equal to the births per capita multiplied by the total amount of individuals. What I mean by this, and that's an equation, so of course we're going to box that in. What I mean by this equation is the following. What we have is an expected number of births per year. This, this equation above right here gives us an expected, expected number of births per year, yr for year, in a population. So this is a very, very easy way of figuring out what do I expect out of my population? How much do I expect my population to give birth? How many births am I really going to have? And we can just finally really just drive home this point by doing one last example on this idea by saying that let's say you have, imagine you have a population with uh, let's say 200 individuals. So I have 200 individuals, and I have a per capita birth rate of what I just solved for right here, which is 0.075. How can I figure out how many births are going to be in this new 200 individual population? Well, what I have is I know how much the birth rate is going to be per individual. All I have to do is multiply this rate by all of the individuals. All I have to do is multiply B which is, we'll do that right over here, all I have to do is get cap big B by, cap by multiplying little b, which is 0 0.075, by what? By the total amount of individuals in question, 200. What does that stand for? N is equal to population size. Look how, much I'm, look how many members I have, 200. So now we have capital B is equal to 0 0.075 times 200. This gives us a final calculation of B is equal to 15 births and that's going to be um, specifically in that year. Why did we need to figure this out? Why did we need to figure out 15 births in that year? Because we're now looking at a per capita change. We're trying to figure out a per unit time. That's what we did right over here based off of our birth rate that we achieved. And finally, to conclude, we can simply state that if we have births, we're obviously going to also have a per capita death rate. And we can conclude by stating that the per capita death rate will be equal to m. m is little m will be our per capita death rate, per capita death rate, just like lowercase b. We're going to have the same idea. This is going to be essentially going to stand for the expected numbers of death per unit time. So we'll say expected number death per unit time. I think that's the key here, to figure out how much do you expect over a unit of time, over a year, over a month. And so simply speaking, we get this idea same idea here, we can do same sort of example, um, and then we finally will achieve the fact that, let's say, uh, our final overall equation from this will be the fact that uh, capital D is equal to the same idea here. We have to figure out what deaths are. Well, deaths are going to simply be the product of the death rate, which is not lowercase d, but lowercase m, multiplied by the total amount in the population just like we did for births. Nothing is different between these two except for the fact that one accounts for births in a unit time and this accounts for deaths in a unit time. We can do a very simple example from this. I'll give you an example uh, right now very quickly. EX, let's say we have 20 deaths per year. Let's say we have 20 deaths in a YR for a year. Let me just squeeze this in right there. And then let's say we have a population of 1,000 individuals. What's our lowercase m? Well, lowercase m is equal to 20 divided by 1,000, and that gives me a per capita death rate of 0 0.02. And then I could say, let's imagine I have a uh, population of 100 individuals. Um, what's going, or let's say a population with 200 individuals. What is going to be my uh, per capita death rate? That's going to be D. We take our per capita death rate, 0 0.02, and we multiply by, uh, let's say, 200. 
just like we did here, and we're going to state that in this population we expect the following. We expect the fact that d is equal to 4, meaning that there are going to be 4 deaths in that year. We're not doing anything different than what we did before. Simply what we're doing now is looking at deaths, which are going to be subtracted from the population, and before we looked at births, which are added into the population. We are not focusing on immigrants and emigrants just yet. 